it is time for more of the Bronze Barbarians. Let's get ready to go. Eden Hazard versus J Murph. Now, I've been promised a mwah, Chef Le Kiss banger. 780 ELO rating. So we're skirting on the edge of the bronzy tears here. Let's see what they got in store for us as we get underway with uh, a border conflict here. The Mongols versus the Chinese on Hill and Dale. Now, now, if you're wondering why my voice went all a little, a little bit weird there, it's because you wouldn't really expect the Mongols to get picked too frequently on this map. It's very rare that we see it, especially in 1v1. So kind of curious to see what the plan is for Eden Hazard. First off, the plan is to accidentally click move your town center with your villagers, by the looks of it. Being got blocked out by the deers, so you're trying to shift them away. This is an interesting way to open, actually. Not many players would be doing this. But it's really cool. Like, you could have done this with Khan instead for efficiency. The whole logic is that the deers respond to any sort of movement nearby. So some of this more typical, we've seen it out of, like, HRE does it a lot as well on this map, uh, is you use your scout to push the deer towards the mill for the drop-off. In this case, the town center. Interesting that he chose to use the villages a lot of the time there. He does get a few close by. Uh, he could easily be using the Khan for the rest of this, though, but it makes sense what he's doing now instead. You want to shift the Khan out, you want to collect a bunch of sheep, return, and then push the rest of the deer nearby. Because free deer should be enough to keep you around. You know, you'd think deer would figure out what's going on, right? When they get pushed towards something and one of them gets shot in the face. But, you know, I guess this is just Darwin's fear at work. I mean, if they're so stupid, they deserve to die, right? Okay, that, that's going to be used out of context. Uh-oh. Meanwhile, a little bit more peaceful over here. We don't murder the wildlife just yet. J Murph is going to start on the mill berries. This is pretty standard, by the way. If early on, you should instantly drop the mill. The reason is that you can't supervise an Imperial official in the town center and you want that additional 20% income. It's a huge boost to your economy. So really solid play out, J Murph. We've already watched some games today where people uh, don't get their Imperial official for the first 10 minutes at least. And it means they're missing out on a lot of additional economy. So curious to see if Eden's going to use this Uvu tool in the early game. Uh, it's not the worst idea up against the Chinese because they're still open at this stage in the game. This is one cool thing we've seen Mongols let off of. They don't do it as frequently anymore, but you can consider things like outpost rushing. Instead, look what j Murph is doing. What? What? What is this? He's actually going to wall the Mongol player in. How thoughtful. Oh, j Murph, you warm my heart. What a lovely guy. He sat there and he went, buddy, don't worry, I've got you. I know the Mongols can't build walls, so let me come and build them for you. What a lovely guy. It won't be so lovely if he does get all those walls up. However, Eden has different ideas. Racks being built. He's looking to get a bit frisky. Now, usually when someone builds a racks this early on, it means one thing. They're up to no good, folks. They're in for the cheesy opening. They want some outpost spamming. I mean, these guys, they, they probably have watched a few streams. They've watched a few pro players do it, laughing maniacally as they do. And they're not exactly like the the, the bottom of, of the ELO rankings. I mean, for reference, Eden Hazard is 781 ELO, and uh, J Murph is unranked. But we can consider him around this rank, considering he's getting this matchup. And opening wise, a lot of sheep being returned. So this is really efficient. You want to do this, by the way. You want as many sheep coming back as possible because you want to manipulate this mill to the maximum. Uh, one cool thing about this generation, by the way, I love this for J-Murph. He can drop an Imperial Academy right here. Definitely advise doing this when you have the opportunity because if you're able to minimize the distance between these buildings so that like it's just the right amount of space for an Imperial Academy, the Imperial Academy is a drop-off point for taxes. Taxes that your Imperial official can gather from these buildings and you get taxes based on every drop-off. So it really is your benefit to get this configuration that allows you to use your Imperial officials as supervisors for the additional resource and then immediately as tax men as well. And look at this move. j Murph not only denies him the ability to move out and wall him in, he's now going to drop the outpost. And that is a lot of denied value because it's not only in range of the mill, but also the gold mine. Look, the instant response. So many villagers as well. Moves in with the shivs. Does snipe out one villager. Might get a second one for his trouble. I feel like Eden wants more out of this though. Might not get an opportunity. Outpost is complete. Will Garrison instantly needs to prioritize fire onto the villagers, though. There it is. Opens fire on. Heavy damage coming out. Ooh, ooh. Uh, Eden. 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 We don't believe in this. We don't believe in this. Whoops. Ouch. So just as soon as you think you're building an eco lead, you're losing it. And Eden 
Remember that he was already one or two villages down due to how long he was idle with the TC. He packed it up. He moved it across first, right? It wasn't instantly generating villages the same way that Jay's was. So already lost some value there, hence why he's four villages behind. <laughs> Speaking of one villager, <laughs> he's got... No. Is he going to outpost? He might be outposting. This is some serious shenanigans, if so. It might just be the wall on the west side. That's another possibility. I would love to see an outpost right next to the Mongols. HQ here, though. That would actually be a beaut. Like, Jay Murph, not sure if he's playing Mongols or playing Chinese. Now, nah, it looks like it's going to be the walls, but he was spotted. Uh-oh. If he quick walls and gets on the other side, he'll actually be fine. He doesn't know this is coming, though. So, uh, I think he's in for a rude awakening. Surprise! So the, uh, say goodnight to poor little Billy here. Oh, he actually might have enough time. If he quick walls this, he needs to quick wall, though. Yeah, 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 he's got it. It's like, you're not getting out. He can walk over the other side if he's quick about this as well. He needs to be really on point with the micro. Is he doing it? Is he doing it? Is he doing it? Can he do it? Can he do it? Can he get it? Get it? Get it? Get it? No. No. He got blocked. Oh, no. It was so close as well. Wait. What? No way. He did tap it. He did... What? What is this witchcraft? He went through the other side and then it actually blocked. So, okay. Eden is a little bit pinned in. Still has the front though. That hasn't been completed. Like, J-Mo's shenanigans are not done yet, but... <gasps> is the barber can play? 12. 12 villages? Really, Muff? Holy crap. That is a lot of eco idol right now. That is half your economy. The Great Migration. They're offering themselves as, up as tribute. They're turncoats to the Mongol cause here. And he is. He's going for it. Dropping the barbecue right next to the Uvu and Rax. And with 12 villages, I, he will be able to complete it quick enough. I mean, make that 11. He's going to lose a few for this, though. He's going to sting. I'm not sure it's going to really slow down Eden that much. Like, yeah, he's going to lose the Uvu production, but he's still going to be able to boom. And the peel back. Oh, no. Eden's not paying attention. That's a lost value right there. He could have got additional villages if he turned around straight away. And the peel back again. Oh my god, Murph. This is so good the way he's doing this. Like, it's still costly. But he's minimizing the losses. And now the villagers trying to torture it. Too little, too late. Can garrison in. Instantly inside. And now we'll open fire on all the troops there. Retreat away. Question is, what does he do next? Because this alone isn't going to be worthwhile play. Like, you need more than this. It's the wall in. Wait, what? <laughs> I... Okay, one of these guys is a foreman. One, one of them is just nodding their head saying, good job, everyone, because they're not doing anything. <laughs> At first, I thought this was a big brain move. Like, I thought he'd actually pulled the Imperial official to to oversee any, like, mining here. But no, it's just the Russian. He's going. He's going deeper. j -Muff. He senses an opportunity to invoke irony in this game, and he's doing it. The Mongol outpost Russia is getting a taste of his own medicine. j -Muff able to build much quicker than the Mongols. Oh my goodness. Now, reminder folks that this is like, you know, I don't think this is in the pits of bronze. This might be at the edge of silver, possibly at the heights of bronze. I believe the numbers I get given were around 781 ELO. So still a lot lower than kind of your average, but like, <laughs> Even for that rank, this is impressive. The back and forth here is kind of crazy. Because at that rank, we've seen plenty of players that sit back and chill. They don't really go for this kind of all-in play. This is very risky. But Murph right now, oh my god, is he making it work? Are we getting a, a reason not to pick Mongols on Hill and Dale? I think so. <laughs> wow. So limited space, another outpost going up. He can't like Eden. You need to stop this one. You need to stop this one now. He has no troops. He has no way of stopping it. Oh no. Eden, there is only one option. Pack everything up and run. But where? You can't. You're walled in. Another villager goes down. Murph. He's still, still four villages ahead. After all that. Oh my good gracious. And you know what, Murph, right now, he's like, buddy, it didn't have to be this way. 
You could have had your day to shine. I could have had my day to shine. We could have just chilled on a high ground, boomed up, came, clashed in the castle age, had a great time of it. But you had to make it about the outposts. The outpost filth stops here, though. Anything you can do, I can do better. Get more build than China, I dare you. Oh my, oh my. Idle Eco right now, but I think he wants to build another outpost. He's just waiting on the wood right now. <laughs> Eden. <laughs> One of the very few spearmen remaining is like, I want out of this. I'm defecting. Get me across the border now. Arch is being built up. He can't allow another outpost to go down. Murph makes a mistake here. Shouldn't be in this position. He's going to lose another villager. Really would benefit from some military force here. Grabbing a lot of gold, but not much food. I feel like his economy is now skewed. This is problematic. He could be gathering on the berries. This would be a really good play. But instead, it looks like Eden's going to break out. You can see he's already prepped the siege engineering. He's gone to the arches. It's just a matter of time. He's got enough wood for the ram as well. And because Murph didn't all in, he didn't actually commit with a Rax or an archery range, anything of the sorts. He actually doesn't have any way of preventing this from all going down. He's also lacking on the food. I mean, eight people and the Imperial official. Remember, he accidentally pulled him forward. It's still only one Imperial official, by the way. Murph, buddy, we've got to talk. That, that's a lot of gold. I, mean, I guess he heard that money makes the world go round, but I mean, it's not the only money of this game. I'm afraid without enough food, that this feels a little bit pointless. And there's the ram we were waiting for. And what does Murph do? He tries to build even more outposts. I caramba. I think this is the moment where you cut your losses and get out. Like, I'm not sure how long you're going to last here without any military buildings. He does have enough resource to build one. Instead, I think he's going for more outposts. I, I think he's taking this a little bit too literally. You know what they say, folks? When you stare into the void long enough, the void stares back into you. And he, it seems like Jay stared a little bit too long into the Mongol outposts. Because he, that's all he is now. He doesn't know what the Chinese is beyond outposts at this stage. As now he resorts to trying to torch down the Iran. This is going to cost him dearly. There's not enough room in the inn for everyone here. Villagers just trying to run away. Oh, this is the problem right now. I mean, honestly, like Eden, he could just garrison archers inside the ram and insta kill the villagers each time. Instead, he keeps getting baited in, though. So the trades aren't as good as they should be. But still, it is eventually going his way. Ram's going to renew the push in. Archers exploiting the villagers exposed here. The car will move in to mop up the rest. Uh, I mean, this game, this game is far from over, folks. With this type of opening, the back and forth, you know nobody's dying anytime soon. Wait, what? <laughs> they can't oversee building. You know this, right? <laughs> Murph's like, holy crap, supervision is broken. I can use it to build outposts faster, right? No, no, no. Sir, please. S sir, they don't work that way. Murph just over here trying to put a square-shaped block for a circle hole. Does at least upgrade the outpost, but um, without military units, I'm not so sure that this is this is going to work, buddy. Meanwhile, Murph goes back to the Imperial Academy at least, so he's now going to get the value. Not too bad. So by the way, this Imperial Academy... He didn't go for the optimal one we were looking at before. He actually went for the one between the stone and the mill. Realistically, what you want to be doing with this, you want to be dropping the Imperial Academy, usually a lot other than this, uh, between these two here. Because realistically, like, although you might use stone a lot, you're not like to tap the stone dry anytime soon. And also, more importantly, these are close enough that this Imperial Academy in the center is practically no distance. It means that you can have two Imperial officials overseeing both the mill and the mining camp to give an initial 20% drop off. And then after that, like, or between that rather, you can keep using them for tax returns. You can instantly pick up and turn around, drop off from the Imperial Academy and go back to supervising. So it would have been a more optimal play over here. Uh, but we'll see if Jay wants to use it. I mean, he's still playing zero Imperial officials as it looks like he did lose his one in the front line in the end. No surprise there. I wouldn't really recommend using the Imperial officials as a frontline tank. It does have more health than the villagers, yes, but it also costs a lot more and can't attack. So uh, wouldn't advise that one. Well, Eden, finding a way to thrive and survive. Does need access to gold. We'll be able to get back on that line now. Has started to obliterate the outposts. And Jay's still investing in them. Just kind of pricey, really. 
I mean, 150 stone. Like, I'd rather just use that stone to get into maybe a TC. Second TC in Boom would be really good here. Like, he's still eco ahead. And he's going to remain eco ahead now that he's got Song Dynasty. But you want to extend that lead before Eden gets up in Castle. Something to take note of with the Mongols is usually, like, it used to be when you went for these outpost rushes, you were trying to end the game. It isn't that way so much anymore. Outpost rushes are good to oppress your opponent, but then you want to fall back for Castle Age. So, although Eden missed the mark with the outpost, because Jay decided to roll himself around in the mud with him, it has been to the downfall of Jay. Jay, more outposts. He's just, he won't stop. Look, okay, th there's value in knowing when to cut your losses. Like, Jay right now is in the casino offering up his mother as payment. Like, he's like, honestly, indentured servitude. What kind of deal can I get right now? I need store credit to keep on betting. Ay, ay, ay. And now, like that, they're just neck and neck on the eco again. And remember that Eden is approaching that power spike, that castle age. Castle age when all of his gold workers are 50% more efficient. So he'll actually gap close on that lead that's been built up. In fact, at this rate, like Eden, I wouldn't necessarily recommend a second TC yet. But because of the way that this pressure's played out, there is an opportunity maybe five or ten minutes down the line. It depends on how aggressive Jay chooses to be. As it looks like he's fine. Finally! It's an archer range. But you have to question, like, could this not have been on the front line? Because now you've got Juke Nu running across the map. This is making you look like a Juke Nu. No! This was someone we want to see, remember? We, we talked about this. Like, he dropped a Barbican. There was room for a military bone back here. He could have went for a normal archer range, pushed out archers, and then eventually got Juke Nu. And it would have been really solid because he could have dropped a blacksmith and then also got into Rams himself right outside his opponent's base. But instead, it's, it's a little bit off the mark. I don't feel there's enough Zhugnu yet. They're doubled up by the archers. The archers right now are ignoring. But the moment they turn around, like these trades are just not effective. The second round will be good enough to get through the barb. Remember the other issue of going for the Zhugnu? You now don't have any way of torching things down. That, wait, no, no, we spoke too soon. Remember, folks, the Siege new. You build enough of these Yug new, and they become Battering Rams. So they can kill anything. As To be honest, they are doing three bursts of damage. So realistically, against a Ram, they are actually doing three times the amount of damage of an Archer. There you go. A little bit of uh, knowledge in the noggin for you. Now the Outpost. <laughs> he's just so, he's so relentless. There is something to respect with the stubbornness to what Jay has done here. At the same time, though, like, would it not have been more beneficial to just boom your own eco with all this time you've bought? Because the, the one issue, by the way, is if you continue to trade like this and Eden's army keeps growing, although he's slowly running out of resources, he will break out. And when he does break out, he's going to have a sizable army to rush you with. That's the scare factor right now. Berry's already gone, so won't be able to snipe that eco. And it looks like... Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh, uh Eden's out of food. <gasps> Eden's out. Eden never built into the pastures. He's actually out of food. He needs to get out of this now. He needs access to the berry line. He needs to get rid of the barb in the sun. He needs to do it soon. Instead, he's going to torch the north, though. He'll break his own way out. 19 villagers on the move here. Now, this would be risky if your opponent was interested in building moving units. But luckily, uh, j Murf isn't playing an RTS. He's playing a tower defense game right now. Ignore these guys. They're basically slow moving towers. He's more or less interested in the outpost. And it means that he's going to get away with his shuffle out to the north side. Whereas you know, other players might have went into a stable by now and been harassing in the midfield with horsemen. Question is, is Jay going to rotate? Oh, here we go. Siege Force, folks. I mean, it's decent damage. It ain't much, but it's honest work. Like I said, the Zhuk Nu, you can only reduce damage to one. Remember that. So if a building has 50 missile resistance, which all of them do, it means that your damage is always being reduced to one when your range units like Arch and Zhuk Nu. So the fact that you fire in burst is actually beneficial because it means that instead of doing one damage like an Archer, you're doing three damage in the same interval. And that's why, by the way, if you go up to like 60 Juke New, you can actually start to blitz your way through buildings quite fast. <laughs> it's not necessarily the most optimal strategy, but if it counters what your opponent is building militarily, you can use it as a pseudo siege afterwards. Tech up. Now remember what's just happened here. Like if, if Jay is kind of clocking this, his opponent just teched up in his face. It means he just invested 1,800 resource into a boom. It means he's going to be weaker in the fight. 
Let's see how that fight goes. Nice snipe on the Khan instantly. Chugnu need to micro this to take out individual archers in quantity. Right now, at the end of the trade, it's looking good. This is the power of the Chugnu, after all. And the village is like, whoa, wait, 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 there's a battlefield. Get out of here. Don't mind us, wrong room. You guys finish what you were doing here. That moment when you walk in on a murder and try to pretend you didn't see anything. Now, luckily for Eden, that does mean Jay isn't rushing out to deal with the villagers, but he might still go. Like, actually, you could just park three or four Jignu here and send the rest out. Oh, instead, he's actually walking. <laughs> so, Eden, on the migration again, 20 villagers running away. They're about to set up their own Mongol Empire. And now the stables. So, Jay is very much on the clock right now. He needs to stop this. If the Lancers come out, like the Jude knew are not going to like it. Not unless you've got like 40 or 50. In fact, the one good piece of news for him is that Eden has way too much stone he can't use right now. Because he never got rid of the Barbican. So, right now, Eden is still oppressed. Wait. <laughs> Honestly, these guys can't make up their mind. Are we coming or are we going, folks? Maybe he could have went for the ball play, actually. That moment where you leave the house, you get up the road, you feel confident, and you remember, oh, I left my car keys. I need them as well. Oh, I left my iPod. I have to go back and get it. That's what's happening in these villages right now. Yep, these ones just realized that they didn't feed the cat. Let's go back and deal with that as well. <laughs> oh my god, he's fully walling him in. It's happening. Mongols, no walls, no problem. China's got you covered. <laughs> You may not be able to build it, but the Chinese can help you out with that one. Oh my god. <laughs> the Duke New numbers are increasing. He's still an age behind, but he's still looking strong. Like the issue Eden has is this tech advantage, but he doesn't really have the resources to exploit it. But he's trying to fix that now on the gold. And this might be the, the big mistake that Jay made. Like Jay didn't stay on the gold line. He needed to know. Jay! Jay, no, you're being baited! Oh, this this is mistakes made, folks. I mean, Jay, he's still economically superior right now, but he's given a way out. Like, Eden, being able to get the stables up and getting on the gold means he can afford the lances. Five lances will kill all these you can do. Okay, maybe six or seven. Once you get to that number, you start to feel good. Although Jay is looking to stop him from reaching that number, has still been pushing Jugnu the entire time, was also supervising it. It looks like he's slowed down now, though. Doesn't need to be supervising at this point, but he's saving up for Castle. And that's going to be a good damage boost. Remember for the Jugnu, you're going to be able to get the Blacksmith upgrade of one damage, and then you're going to tech them up as well, which will add additional damage. So they actually become a, a pretty decent force, even against Lancers. Lancers who have four missile resistance by default. And remember, like, you know, you can only go down to one damage, which is where he's at now. Even if you try to mitigate this by blacksmithing up, I, I just don't think Eden has the flexibility with his eco right now. He needs more troops. And yeah, he needs more pastures. Rao's moving in. Tech up still not underway for Jay. Way too much gold. Oh, this guy's a little golem. Oh, you, was that an auto aggro? Was that an auto? That was an auto aggro. What am I watching? No, there is no way. There is no way that this is under 1,000 either. Like, it's small things like that have me sus, man. Like, exploring an opponent not microing correctly like that, like, that, that's something you can probe for, right? But you have to be smart enough to, like, clock that. And right now, Eden is a headless chicken. He doesn't even know whether he's coming or going. He'll move in now, but I, this just isn't enough lances. He didn't even go for the armor hour here. Rams are in on the TC. And the force response is going to cost you dearly, Eden. Peels back and targets the villagers, Jay! I think you're a smurf. Now, I, I know Eden's in blue, but I'm pretty sure I need to chuck blue paint on you because I don't trust this right now. This is on point play. The bait of the Lancers out of position exploits the fact that Eden is not willing to commit and then baits the villagers in to annihilate them all. Now look at Eco lead, almost doubling him up. And after all that, now Jay can tech up as well. <laughs> no! Okay, Eden, he's still going to be able to get the berries for now, but he has no way back in. And although Jay's not coming for him yet, he's feeling pretty confident. The interesting part to me is like, Jay is pretty on point in his tactics in the battle, right? Like his micro is reasonable. Uh, he makes these cheeky little plays like the, the, the auto aggro of the Lancers. 
Um, some things that like maybe show signs for improvement is things like this archery range. Like this could have been on the front line at any stage. Um, also, he had weird kind of mistakes early on, like the Imperial official being pulled forward. Maybe too many villagers committed to the outpost and overcommitment to outposting. But overall, like I love the way he's recovered a lot of this. However, this timing may have been a, a little bit unfortuitous for him. You knew he'd get caught off guard. Big mistake made there. The Lancers shouldn't have found that value. Now the racks are going up, but they are delayed. The timing on this. Spearman coming out, but they're not even upgraded to Hardened yet. Rams are going to be exposed. Eden says, I'm not done yet. He's looking to survive. Meanwhile, Jay is just going to try to contain the issue. Like someone suffering from a virus. You know, just don't interact with them. Give them their own little playground. Don't let them out. Jay, can we talk about the tech? I'm starting to think he doesn't realize that he hasn't gone castle yet. This is starting to look like someone who thinks they're going for Imperial. At this rate, you will be able to go back to back. But uh, you do need to go for castle first. Castle that would have been very beneficial for several different reasons. But you know what? Castle is overrated. I mean, is it really an outpost rush if you tech up? Come on, it's, it's just doesn't fit. Jay's like, hey, I got access to Jigni, I'm good. Although this squandered opportunity does mean Eden just got a lifeline. Like, he's not out now. And he could bounce back with a vengeance. Like, although Jay has walled in Eden, he hasn't walled himself in. What? No way. There is, there is, no, there is no possible way you're going to be able to build that. Jay, with the very ambitious astronomical clock tower. You might even call it a BM clock tower at this stage. However... I think he might get away with it because Eden is distracted by the Barbican. He needs to be fast about this, though. Where's the pool of villagers? Oh, they came from the north side. This is going to be very delayed. Spearman could hold his opponent in the choke point, though. Remember that it's a full transition. Eden doesn't have range units anymore, so Spear's going to get good pokey value here when you try to burn down the Palisades. He will have to be fast about this, though. So, kind of a, a few... Intricate details to highlight about what Jay done here. It's the proxy base is good. The timing on building it up is way too late. He should have probably been doing this pro like 10 minutes ago. Would have been a good timing. And this is probably like a 20, 25 minute game because he had Eden on the ropes. Eden had nowhere near to, uh, nowhere to go. The biggest mistake after that point, like if we look a little bit later, the Zhugnin player is really cool from Merv. I think his mistake is that he gave up on the pressure, <laughs> right? He kind of made that mistake the villains do at the beginning of, of a superhero movie. Like, they'll beat the hero, or like an anime kind of trope, right? They'll beat the protagonist like, yeah, take that, you piece of crap. What up? Biggest poncho in the house can't deal with me. And then they just go back to their own little weird machinations, just giggling at the side. And then eventually, like, it's discovered the protagonist didn't die. They survived all along. They come back. They beat you. That's what happened with this gold vein. Jamer played the typical anime villain and allowed Eden to come through, scream, I'm not done yet, and march out with Lancers. And all of a sudden, he doesn't have control of the situation. He at least completes the Castle Age tech up, but the full base is going to be a fat fail. And the flood out is going to be problematic. I mean, Jet, you need to wall yourself in. It's Lancers. You force your opponent to push Lancers. They will rush across the field. They will do some, some decisive damage, especially considering that you're so exposed right now. Trip racks behind the primary TC. Murph looking to recover. With the third attempt at a Rax line. He's realized, ah, oh, right, yes, these are better when they're in my base if I want to keep them alive. That is true. Murph still hasn't actually upgraded them yet. He's still waiting to actually get into Castle Age Spearman here. Meanwhile, Lance are done with the Ford Rax. Astronomal clock tower is going to be a throwaway as well. And the timing is perfect because Eden was running out, right? Like, he's got the wood line in the north. But if you think about the gold situation, like, he's almost tapped that one dry. This one's a bit more aggressively located. Wood line was getting very scarce in his own base. And the transition into pastures was feeling really uncomfortable. But it looks like he's recovered. He's pretty kosher now. And actually, look at the shrunk eco difference. Reminder, folks, that Jay was almost doubling up his opponent at one stage. I believe it was like 70 to 36. Now it's 55 to 47. Less than 10 between them. Eden has fully recovered this game. And also his standing army is more impressive. 23 to 16, and he's pushed quality units. 
Meanwhile, his opponent's only pushing spears, and you can see actually the switch up. He's got archers in the mixer. Like Eden, he didn't skip a beat. He respects the fact that he needs to keep a ratio. Composition is important. Well, we talked about low ELO series. Now they're gonna be interesting, and I'm starting to realize what the the, the ELO stands for. At least the O stands for in it. It stands for Oh No. Because that's what J-Murph is thinking right now. What have I done here? What have I unleashed? You have unleashed the dragon, my friend. Eden is ready for Imperial Age, and you are nowhere near there. We'll see what he wants to do. He could reinvest in an army. He could tech up. I think it is going to be a tech up play here. The white Stupa could do a lot of work for him. Ram's moving in as well. Eden decides to reinvest, though. Not in a rush here. Wow. Not on the tech side of things. Instead, he's going to overwhelm him so many lances. The timing, though, he needs to move faster. Eden, come on. Get in there, lad. He's on the move. The walls are too late. Jay, the greedy bugger. He waited too long. Archers are in. You can target the Spearman, get their bonus damage here. Zhugnu trying to move in range as well. Distracted by the lance. Everything prioritizing them as a target means it's going to end up being a bad trade. Or at least individually taking out the lance is good. However, the amount of troops you're going to lose to do so is not going to look good. And the shift away, the Spearman running off. With the Knights here, leaving Zhugnu to fight up against Archers. The wraparound could be good if he re-engaged on the Zhugnu line. Archers are prioritizing the Spears, but a missed micro there. Eden going to give over more than he should have. Recovery found for the moment. Eden will not be able to slay the beast here. Jay will survive. So after a lap around the neighborhood, Jay realizes, actually, I'm still in this. Checks his pulse, realizes he hasn't flatlined yet. It's all because Eden was a little bit indecisive there. Didn't rush into the base. Waited until he reinvested into the Lancers. And all of a sudden, he offers an opportunity for his opponent to get back in this. And Jay is starting to get a little bit scary now. Like, the quantity that he pushed out at the end there, like, he was very behind the military counter first. He recovered it. Like, he started to transition to farms as well, so his food woes are behind him. You can see he's starved for the moment, but he's starting to pad it, right? And if we look at the difference in numbers, like, Eden, although he has a lot of surplus food, his income is a pile of dog turd right now. It, it doesn't impress. Only 10 villagers working on food, despite the fact that he actually needs to spend that food and gold into these lances. But weirdly enough, he doesn't see it that way. Instead, he's going hard into the siege now. Back. <laughs> oh, no. You didn't need Manga Nels. You needed Manga Schnell, as in you needed to go quicker in this game. Eden, opportunity has been missed, my friend. You've been set back. <laughs> now, <laughs> Jay will live or die by this rule. One rule to rule them all. It's the wall. However, the wall is going to be a fail here. Outpost to block it. Spin moving in. Only Lance in the field for the moment. And Eden. Yeah, he realizes he needs to get more archers out soon. And Jay has abandoned the walling altogether. Doesn't care about it anymore. He says, the only walls I need is right next to your base. Moves in. Starts to get rid of the outpost network. Eden, still sneaking this one up. Hasn't been seen yet. It's not really going to stop much at this rate. And now it gets spooky. Barbican being rebuilt. Maganel's lances are starting to bulk up here. Now, Jay, th this is the moment where it gets awkward. You're not reinforcing the front line again. Buddy, we have got a sort 30 military is not going to dominate here, especially with Eden being on the home field. Jay's just trying to be realistic. Like, from a real world logistic standpoint, you couldn't have half your population be in the military force. Like, how would the economy be sustained at home? What about the women and children? It just doesn't make sense mathematically. So you just gotta have double the eco to military, right? Oh, great war, Jay. Gonna be attempted again. Still hasn't been breached on the east or western side, so seems like it has stand the test at the test of time, but uh oh. Uh oh. Eden realizes what's going on. Chases through and the abandoned here, Jay. What's given? What's up here? You got 15 spears. You need to be respected. Don't worry about him. Not until the Maganel's in range. And oh no, the Barbican's not touched. Uh, 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 uh. All right, that's just a freebie. So Barbican up. 
Barbican down, barbican all around. And right now, Jay just wants to say, I've got a barbecue to get to. Can I leave this game early, please? Because it, it just feels so awkward. Never able to really get in. At least not stay in. More villagers being pulled. Central base could be really good for Jay here. I really, really hope this isn't a look at my pretty keep, isn't my keep amazing type play. And more a look at my proxy base. Good luck getting in, Mother Ducker. Because honestly, if you actually set up the racks and the, you know, Archer Angel maybe in Siege Workshop behind here, I think you can dump the Eden's composition right now. Like he's starving very quickly. In fact, Eden needs more gold. Wow. That's surprising to me. So Eden only has four people in gold. This is a, a very irksome play coming out from Eden. The, the reason is that as the Mongols, this is your biggest advantage now. Like in Castle Age, the step readout gives an additional 50% drop off on gold. It's actually worth taxing yourself on this. Like putting at least 10 people in here to get a surplus gold. Because then if you ever run out of enough resource, uh, for at least the mid game, you can actually afford to quickly trade it efficiently. Like this much wood only makes sense if Eden wants to go for a secondary TC. Otherwise, it, it's just pure insanity to hold this much. Like even if you're thinking Siege, like once again, if you're thinking Siege, why have you got four people on gold? You're starting to adjust it a little bit, but it feels a little bit weirdly skewed. I, I just don't think you really need this many people over here. Eden. Build not the rats. Jealous of these walls that he wishes he could build. Jay has now gone to the Siege Workshop. Interesting choice considering you, uh, you had this astronomical clock tower, but that's what happens when you decide to put all your landmarks at the front face this dead. So only choice he really has here. Could be using Imperial Fish to get them out quicker though. Is anyone else sensing the opportunity for Eden at this rate to just rush him with Lancers and finish off Jay? It's 12,000 health. I feel like if he builds him up to critical mass of Lancers though, he could actually do it. And it all comes down to the fact that Jay decided to invest multiple landmarks on the front line that didn't actually bear great fruit. I mean, the Barbican was decent, but this astronomical clock tower was an astronomical fail in this game. I guess Jay just doesn't believe in timekeeping or something. You know? Like, time's a conspiracy, right? Wait a sec. Wait a sec. <laughs> Jay Murph says, If I can't win the game outright, I'll at least be able to tax you at any border crossing, okay? Because I've got a million and one walls. This is now the Murphy's Law of Labyrinths. Every turn, there is a wall. He has so many walls. Uh, Murphy's just, like, he's just been smart about this, right? He just allocated the line. He's like, oh, I understand the value of this intricate piece of property. I think I can actually make a future as a real estate agent. Very smart. So the question is whether Eden is going to behave appropriately for the TD game, right? If this is a tower defense game, then logically, if Murph walls the correct areas, he can force Eden to go all the way around the map to reach his base. But it is important, remember, due to tower defense rules, Murph cannot complete the enclosure. He has to keep an opening into his base. Otherwise, yeah, you, it, you're cheating in the tower defense game. Right now, though, the AI is going to descend a very quick route towards... Oh, no, he's cheating. It's not allowed. It's against the rules. All right, so he stopped playing the true tower defense game. Instead, it's going to turn into a little bit of a, a long-range siege warfare. Traction Treb's coming out. Spruill's here as well. We need to address that. In fact, a lot of Traction Trebuchets. Holy smokes. He's pushing it. That is now six plus two Maganels. Eden's getting a little bit spooky here. I mean, he, he kind of threw away the lead before, but he's recovered it again. In fact, Jay, he's a little bit slow on the production. You can see 62 to the 88. Really needs to address to this soon. He needs to address the issue that he's not replacing lost forces quick enough, especially considering he's going for cheap type units like the Spearman, like the uh, the Zhugnin. And also needs to get some more... Wait, what is this wall about? <laughs> Once again, Jay just carving up the map logically here, guys. It's territories. It's fine. Very avid wall builder. He once watched an episode of Takeshi's Castle, his favorite 
mode was the maze, and he decided he wanted to recreate that here in the world of Age of Empires 4. Spring uh, 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 uh. I mean, they're getting the traction trebuchet. They're, they're being ignored. Eden, Eden, it's time to go. He wraps around, lots on the backside, stabbing in here. Spearman gonna force him away, but now the man at arms, the man at arms are unanswered. They can get in. Springle's gonna be traded out. Manganel's forcing back. Jay Murphs oh, side steps in the way. Has lost the keep after all that. The Springles as well. And Eden now looking very healthy. The ability to imperial up and also a standing army. Bigger still than his opponent. Murph, this is problematic. One nest of bees is not gonna protect you, son. Moving in. Wraps around the lances, tries to peel the spearman away. Xiu Nu gonna be revealed. The man at arms get on top of him. Everything is gonna be burst through. Manganel shots coming in. Heavy splash damage in. And Jay, well, the walls will keep you alive, but for how long is the real question now? And I'm a little bit concerned. I mean, Jay has really been off the mark with producing new troops. Like, it's been very slow time and time again. He definitely has subscribed to the one-child-only policy in China. Because I've never really seen this amassment of troops that you'd expect to see with the Ecos he's had at different stages of the game. Meanwhile, Eden's kind of understood perfectly. Like, just body him, lol. Just throw more crap at the wall and see what sticks. Plenty of crap is being thrown at Jay right now. Still tripled up in the military department. Eco's more or less neck and neck. And remember that Eden is getting more money every time he burns these buildings. 25 food, 25 gold. Another risk, by the way, of what was done here by Jay. This is why it's very risky to do an outpost rush against Mongols, because should they burn those outposts down, should they burn down any Ford infrastructure, they're getting paid. Not only are you losing the cost that you invested, but they're getting 25 food and gold per. Oh, Murph, no. Buddy, this ain't the move. Are, are we going for the 41-minute Barbican rush again? I, I think we're past that. I think we're a little bit too deep. And it's getting difficult to keep all the blood in your head at this stage, as uh, that tends to happen with giant rocks falling from the sky and, and, and squashing you. Murph, buddy, Yuan Dynasty is the only thing that can maybe help him, but I, I just don't know if that... I don't think speed is the problem. I think quantity is the issue. Maybe if he could get around and nest of bees out, like that would be solid here. Because nest of bees are better than, than the mangonels, but I'm still concerned about the gap close. Like Eden, you, you have to remember this Khan with the Nuva Arrow, the 0.5 extra movement speed, it will allow the gap close. One thing that is quite missing for Eden, though, he could get a full outpost here, get the Yam movement speed, juice him up, the quick gap close. I keep using that word a lot because it's very important in this situation. Like, if both sides do play into Siege, it's going to come down to who can get across quicker. And it looks like that is the case. Nesta is quickly being built up by Jay still. Not as quickly as he could be, though. No supervision coming out. Although Eden is going to take his time getting through the wall. It is just an inevitability at this stage, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Murphison. It's Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And plenty has gone wrong for Jay here. Moving in. Eden ready to rock and roll. Almost at that critical mass. 109 military, and the walls have been breached. Meanwhile, poor little Jay, only 41 milli still. Nesta Bees, playing out like a cinematic scene here, goes up to the high ground. We will zerg them from the side. They'll never see it coming, master. There is a lot of them, though. And I don't know if three Nesta Bees can save you on their own. Eden's really hesitant, actually. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't gone in yet. Like, he's not quite pop capped yet, but you can just end this game. There's no need to really hang around anymore. Like, every moment you hang around is an opportunity for Jay to get together a defense force. Maybe he's waiting for this. Like, the tech up is now available. Eden doesn't really have anything else to build. He's actually refused the temptation multiple times. Like, I'll give some credit. Like, a lot of players would have went for the boom up, but he actually went for the military force to dominate the midfield. A lot of people would have just fallen back for an Imperial and been vulnerable to J-Murph's pressure again. But not Eden. 
And it looks like Eden's ready to go. Surplus to replace what could be lost. Khan is first to fall. But he won't be lost. Rush in here. Lance is trying to get deep in the mixer, trying to target out onto the anti siege. Nesta B's target as well. Manganel Fire coming through onto the front line. Nesta B's just not able to sting hard enough here. Down to half HP, but they're going to remain at half HP. The army is being rinsed. Every siege weapon falling too quick. And Murph, with barely any troops left to defend him, is likely done here. Eden now tripling him up, almost quadrupling him up in the military department. There's just nothing left to do. The mango is still here. The treb still here. With so many troops remaining, it feels like, Jay, this might be the time to wave the white flag. I mean, Eden... He hasn't quite finished you off yet, but we are very close to being there. Keep's going to be garrisoned. No boiling oil, though. No way to help him. Eden, maybe thinking about going for the BM Monument at this stage. I mean, obviously, he'd have to sort his, his stone to get a wonder. But you have to wonder why he hasn't gone for it. It looks like he finally has. No? Still no tech up. All right, Eden doesn't believe in Imperial Age. It's Age of Empires. It's not realistic that you get guns. And I think that's why he hates Jay the most. Because all these emplacements have randomly had guns. You know what? They can't fire those guns if they no longer exist. Keeps down. Imperial Academy next on the hit list. Eden moving in for the jugular. And Jay, I think looking back at this game, there are many points where you could argue it was his game to lose. An opportunity to end his opponent early on if he starved him on the goal. An opportunity to end his opponent early on if he built the proxy base 10, 5 even minutes sooner. An opportunity to just fall back and boom up if you didn't want to fully invest in the pressure. But all those opportunities squandered. And at the end of it, what are you left with? You are left with a giant pile of rubble in your own base as Eden. Once again, refuses Imperial, reinvests in the military force, will look to end the game, and with only a town center and an Imperial palace remaining, there is little to nothing left that Jay can do. He's going to go for one more Ura. I respect it. Looks good until you realize the man at arms are now going to burn you. And I think that, that should be it. Like, the man at arms. The torch damage is enough to get through one nest of bees. Village is dying. Lance is wrapping in. That'll bring it to a close. Jay, relentless to give this away, but we'll finally realize that Eden has just bested him.